What is this garbage you're watching? Here, I want to watch the news. news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined now by Doug, Doug Jones. He joins us here uh, from Texas, I believe. And he is a victim of a phenomenon known as gang stalking. He runs a channel on YouTube where he has very many subscribers uh, that he talks about this with and uh, has been doing so for years now. Uh, Doug, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, appreciate you, Jacob. It's great to be here, man. You bet. So first of all, I guess there's, this is such a broad topic, but why don't you start at the beginning with what happened and what led you to be a victim of what's now taking place? Why don't you start at the beginning and just kind of go chronological as possible? Okay. Yeah, that, that's no problem. Uh, really, the beginning began in 2004 after a divorce. Uh, I had a relationship with a woman who had ties with a local KKK, and she never told me that. Wow. She told me over and over and over, you never want to mess with my dad. And I didn't do anything to prompt that conversation with her. It was like she would just kept dropping that every six months. Mm. And I didn't think anything of it. And a couple of times we went to a father's house. To have a, there was a party there. And I made a little mental note that I'm seeing all these white cars and white trucks parked up and down the street. I'm like, wow, this is odd. Like, there's like 50 white cars and trucks. And it didn't really, you know, just sink in at that time. But somewhere during the relationship, she was being passive aggressive, and I don't know why. We never had any arguments. And uh, she just started saying uh, something to the effect that my father took me to my grandfather's, uh, uh, you know, burial uh, mm -hmm. graveyard cemetery and said, you know who's there? And uh, she goes, yeah, that's granddaddy so-and-so. And he said, no, just not granddaddy so-and-so. He was grand imperial clan wizard, whatever of the clan. And I didn't think anything of it. And I thought, you know, I don't know my family history uh, except for about a hundred years back. And I'm like, well, maybe someone in my family could have been like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But she was being passive aggressive. And what she was doing now in hindsight was asserting the fact that I'm connected. And if you ever do me wrong, you're going to pay for it. And we got a divorce, and then shortly after that, my, my world just turned upside down. And from 2004 until 2010, I was having every sign and symptom of gang stalking, but I'd never heard of the term, and I didn't know who was behind it. And somewhere around 2010, just one breadcrumb from another breadcrumb, like on the internet and videos and stuff like that, I came across the term gang stalking. And then I saw what it really is it's it's a it's a program of complete sabotage and this was created by the east german secret stasi police in east germany shortly after berlin uh shortly after world war ii and it remained in place until the berlin wall came down and that's when gang stalking sort more or less ended there uh mm -hmm. 2010 uh on up to now i know what it's about i've done a lot of research on it and there are a lot of people who try to discredit us and say, you just have a delusion disorder, you have this, you have that, but it's well documented. I mean, there are archive, there's an archive in East Germany devoted to the secret saucy, the police and the files that they kept on them. And this program is a program, um, I'm not exactly sure who is running it. There's a lot of different theories about it, but it is a, a, a corrupt government entity that's doing this is comprised of like DOJ, DOD, uh, FBI, XC, CIA, and NSA. And somewhere in their operations of command, they have this program and it's just being uh, propagated all throughout the United States and around right. the world. So a couple, couple points just to, that, that's, that's a really good intro. That was very in-depth. Uh, so Presumably, in the mix of people who are uh, who believe they're victims of gang stalking, like anything else, you could have a few people in there that are delusional. Would you agree oh, with that? Most definitely, yeah. You you could definitely have some people in there that sadly, you know, think that something's happening to them. Maybe something is happening to them, and maybe it's just not this even. Um, and that that could that could set 
them in the wrong direction. And then yeah. the other the other part is you mentioned the period to 2010 and then 2010 you become aware of gang stalking. Yeah. And then there were other signs and symptoms, but then Snowden comes out. Edward Snowden comes out in 2013 with all the documents and all of that. Yeah. That the NSA basically taps into all emails, all just everything, everything that, that crosses the pipeline of the Internet. They plug right into the pipeline and they have it all. They don't have to decrypt it. They have backdoors given to them by all the big tech companies. What did that do for your understanding when 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 that all came out? How did that or maybe you and other people, because you actually have a big you know, YouTube channel and all that. So you don't speak for just yourself, but I'm sure you get hundreds of comments and all of that. Well, what Snowden basically did, I mean, uh, he really didn't expose the program. He exposed what our country is doing, which is collecting a lot of data on everyone. You mm -hmm. know, uh, they, they've got more data than they can even sift through. And th this is said by Snowden and by uh, uh, former FBI, I think it was, or N no, former NSA, uh, William Benny. And they're using this, uh, this information uh, somehow or another you know, to collect on everybody. So at one point, maybe they can get an I, AI to, um, you know, figure out what people may or may not do, who are good candidates for a mind control thing like this gang stalking is. Um, but Snowden, he, you know, he definitely let us know that there, there's a lot going on. And at least the machinery of, of the yeah, data collection. Yeah. Right. OK, so then you talk about this period. Um, now I have a good rough timeline with which we can work through. So at the beginning of this, when this first kicked off, what kind of things happened that um, that you would characterize as the stalking? Because stalking can presumably take many forms, but what actually happened? How did you catch one? You know, stalking is, is not really a good term to use in this. It's really more or less sabotage. Um, when this began, uh, it... it it began before I even knew it began, because one of the things that they do before they start, you know, honing in on you and doing all, all these crazy things to you is they do a, 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 a profile. You know, it's like if you've got the FBI that's got some guy under uh, surveillance, they will send a guy out to that guy's home and uh, like have a garbage truck that looks like the local garbage truck and the guys will have uniforms on that kind of matches uh, the uniforms of the local uh, uh, garbage truck. And on trash day, they will send that truck out going down that block and they'll pick up that targets, that suspected um, criminal. They'll pick up his trash and maybe pick up a few more people's trash and then they'll light out and they'll go back to headquarters and then they'll don masks, gloves, respirators and everything. And they will pick apart the, the target's trash looking for DNA, looking for things that can help profile them, like uh, prescription bottles, uh, your bills. Anything that uh, might be in your trash, anything, presumably. You just go yeah. through everything, and that's a way to profile someone to get a, a, a broader picture of who it is that you're targeting. And then once you find zero in on whatever it is you want to exploit, whether it's a medical problem or a financial problem or a relationship problem, they start honing in on these things and they'll run campaigns directed at those uh, perceived weakness to exploit. OK, and then you so let's get in on. So this is the, the now we've defined the timeline and what it can can involve and how it begins. Um, and then the, the obvious question becomes we're like going through a, what you would go through investigating a crime here. I'm just trying to figure out the fact patterns and <clears throat> yeah. and go through. And then the next question is usually, OK, then what's the uh the motive and and the motive has to be uh paid particular attention to i think in this because this is uh this would be a, a a crime that it would involve a lot of resources i mean millions of dollars because it, absolutely. in an f in an fbi investigation and and i'm somebody myself it's it's well documented who's been uh under investigation by the fbi in fact a, a journalist did a Freedom of Information Act request for my name and the FBI came back and said they had 24,000 documents and there was too many to even disclose unless they paid a $700 fee or something like that. So so I, I've, I've gotten a taste of this, but what, what, what happens is that 
they have a certain amount of resources they're willing to expend to do whatever it is they do, whether it's look through your trash or, or subpoena your emails or uh, uh, conduct surveillance or what have yeah. you. And then a time comes where their supervisor comes to them and says, okay, did you find a crime? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, okay, do you think you're going to find a crime soon? And if the answer is no to that, then then they say, well, then you've got to move on because we can't you know, keep expending money endlessly on an investigation. Um, so what what about this warrants would you think, where are they coming from to want to stock slash investigate you for what is, uh, I guess, would be almost approaching 20 years here pretty soon? Yeah, uh, 17 years into it. It's, it's for revenge. Uh, people who are well connected, that know people that administrate this program, they can contact them and go, this guy over here, I hate him. And you guys got this program and I want you to put him in the program. It was for, it was for revenge in my case, not because I committed a crime. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anybody can be placed on this watch, watch list and anyone can be targeted. And it seems to be that the main focus of this is to, um, uh, it's like, that they use uh, tactics like classical conditioning, like with Pavlov's dog. You sensitize the dog to a treat and he'll start to salivate. They'll use operate, operational conditioning, which is basically behavior modification and uh, psychological warfare tactics, tactics to harass people. Um, so there is no clear, you know, objective that I see other than to, and I, I really can't articulate this, other than to study um, beha human behavior in various response situations. Because if you ha if you did like, like this on a college campus, like the Milgram experiment and the Stanford prison experiment, that's a control group group. And that's kind of super, you know, uh, not super, but, it, it would just be a theory of testing these things out. You're not really mm -hmm. doing it in a live setting. I but in a live setting like this, you've got real people under real pressure, and every bit of this is documented. Just like every uh, uh, person that was a target in uh, East German Secret Stasi, their files are in the archives. And I have a file, and everybody that undergoes this has a file. But really, the complete objective to this is to drive someone to the point to where they'll either commit suicide, commit a heinous crime, or end up being, uh, you know, locked away in a mental institution. And it, it, it's working on a lot of people. Right. Okay. So it is. So that's something that you're seeing. It's working on a lot of people yes, within. You've seen that because you have a unique view because you're not just some person who suffers this. You have this YouTube channel with like 8,000 subscribers or close to it at last time yeah. I checked. So you have a unique uh, view of all this and, and you're saying it does work. So, um, they, so what, what kinds of things you mentioned sabotage, give us some examples of what's been done to you. My career, uh, I was a, a nurse med surge nurse for 11 years and I could go work anywhere I wanted to. I had no problems, uh, uh, finding employment, had no problems, uh, asking for reference letters or people just saying, Doug, you're the out outstanding, uh, nurse this month at eat. East Texas Medical Center in Tyler, Tyler, Texas, or I work for an agency and I'm getting a letter of commendation. You put in a lot of effort, you put in a lot of work. We really appreciate you. We value you. I had a lot of skills. Uh, my resume is very, very impressive. But when I became a, a targeted individual, they systematically destroyed my career. And I have not worked as a nurse since 2008. And I'm out like almost $600,000 with the revenue and I've been relegated to uh, just taking these low paying jobs because I can't go back into nursing. And the reason I cannot go back into nursing is because they targeted me in such a way that there were times that they were abusing the people in my care. And it had I reported it, you know, I, I didn't know what to report because at that time I didn't know I was a targeted individual. I just knew things my world was imploding around me. Had I knew I was a targeted individual in 2008, I would have stood up and, and I would have fought, but I, I had to let my career go because there were many, many instances where the lives of my patients were, were you know, under threat. 
And I can just see that the hostilities could, uh, you know, uh, go over, go overboard and they could possibly harm one of my patients. And so I bowed out of nursing. I see. I see. But, but my career has been destroyed. My family relationships have been destroyed. I am always losing one job after another. I go my entire life uh, living a competent life. And uh, when this program began, it just systematically sabotaged your work, your family, your friends. Uh, they will go around into your community, your place of work, and tell people that you're a pedophile or that you committed some crime that you haven't been convicted of. They'll start smear campaigns, slander campaigns, noise campaigns, constant, constant harass, harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, case in point, when I was uh, still you know, uh, dealing with this and not knowing who was doing it, uh, I would ride my bicycle to the grocery store and uh, I would pull up into like the grocery store. And as soon as I got into the park at parking lot, five to 10 car alarms going off at the same time, you know, da, 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 da. And I'm like, this is odd. And then I go in the grocery store, they all stop. And when I walk out of this grocery store, start again. Um, it's it's just an, insane. They, they go through your trash, they read your letters. Uh, I, I actually wrote down a list of names uh, of the women that I've been with mm. at one point in my time. And there was a couple of names on there that, that looked like, um, you know, they were underage, but I didn't sleep with them. Th these were women that I could have slept with, but I didn't. And I just watered up the paper and I, I, I threw it in the trash. And two days later, I go to work and they start doing this uh, campaign of directed conversations where uh, they, they took apart the letter. And they, it was like, oh, he's a pedophile. He's a pedophile. And what would happen, I'm a charge nurse at a nursing home. And at midnight, when these people are just laying, sitting in their chairs trying to stay awake, all of a sudden they get a text message and they wake up and they would get uh, a script that would tell them what to read. Not all of them were in on it, but the vast majority. And one would say something like, uh, oh yeah, he's a pedophile, they're gonna kill him. And another person would say, oh yeah, Walmart is gonna kill him. He's a pedophile. Walmart's going Walmart. to huh. Well, Walmart is a pseudonym. It's a ghost name for the person who is behind my targeting. And this was okay. 2007. And I didn't put it together until 2010. But Walmart, let's call the guy Willie Mays. Do you see how Walmart and Willie Mays go together? Okay. Uh, you know, instead of his name being Walmart, his first name starts with an M. I mean, a W in his last name starts with an M. And he let me know right then and there, I'm the one behind this. And I didn't put it together for a couple of more years. And once I put it together, I could clearly see it because remember I told you about those white trucks? Yeah. Well, Tom, I go under a campaign of vehicular harassment. These guys are everywhere. They're so like zeroing in on the, on the job thing, for example, when somebody's making such uh, serious accusations, and then that leads them, I presume they fired you with cause or something over the accusations or how do you, how do you, the most critical thing for me would be to try to establish a paper trail, you yeah. know, to, to ha say, you have to put in writing why you're firing me. We got these reports. Well, let me see those reports, you know, in writing. And I try to be putting together a paper trail that I could use to have some response, whether it be, you know, suing for wrongful firing or whatever it happened to be, but I would be trying to put together a paper trail. How did that take shape exactly? Do you, well, I mean, there was really no paper trail in this. Uh, at this point, I didn't know what was going on. And gang stalking is not just comprised of stalking and uh, uh, campaigns of harassment. It, they also use electronic uh, technology, which is supposed to be classified and only used for military use, like, uh, you know, things of that nature. And they use two different uh, forms of uh, harassment. One is called voice to skull technology, which we used in Desert Storm uh, mm -hmm. when we were in, you know, invading them. Uh, we, we used that technology. We had uh, people who could speak Arabic and they were using microwave technology. This is- I've actually seen that. I know what you're, I know what you're yeah, talking about. This yeah. is, I'll lay down your arms and surrender to the Americans because they all did, heard this in their head. And um, what had happened, I, I, I didn't get fired from this job. I, I, I packed up my bags and I left because I was being traumatized right. by the technology. 
And just a little really quick story. I was off for a couple of days and I wanted to watch a movie and uh, the movie at the time that was getting a lot of rave reviews was uh, Brokeback Mountain. It's kind of, I don't know if I want to watch this or not. It's just, you know, I ain't putting out nobody for, uh, you know, for whoever they care to sleep with or not. But I'm like Heath Ledger and, and uh, that other guy, they're pretty good actors. Let's see what it's about. So I watched the movie and then I go to work the next night. And as soon as I come on duty, I have a patient that has been in my care ever since I've been working there for the past year, year and a half. And all of a sudden she's yelling, oh, broke back mountain. Oh, broke back mountain. And I just, I, I just, I'm like, what's going on? This woman had a stroke. She was uh, paralyzed, basically. She was flaccid, both sides. And she never could hold a conversation with anybody. Basically, the only thing that she could say is, oh, John, where are you? That was John is the name of her son. And it was, you know, she would just basically repeat the same thing over and over. She didn't have cable TV. She wasn't cognizant or aware enough to watch TV. I don't know how this technology is used on other people. I don't I don't understand it, but but they definitely use that movie and they targeted this woman and it just it freaked me out totally I see. Freaked me out. that's yeah. not the only case in point with that there, there's something else that i can prove to where that this technology is real because i i understand people go you might have been delusional you might have been psychotic well i'll tell you this and uh shortly after this no this this was before this uh right after i got out of nursing um i, I went to work at a pizza hut I worked at several places, and every place I worked, except for this place, I was fired for, for no legitimate reason. And I'm at work, and I get these songs stuck in my head, just, you know, songs from my youth, like Jeremiah was a bullfrog, Joy to the World, uh, Smoke on the Water, things like that. People Catchy have, songs. Have, have, have these uh, uh, intrusive thoughts or in, intrusive melodies that get in their head. And one of them, let me pull this up for you real quick. One of these was uh, the Slinky uh, commercial. I don't think you're old enough to remember this toy, but back in the 70s and 60s, this was a classical genius. I remember the toy, but not the commercial. Not okay. the commercial, yeah. I, I want to play you just the melody, and this is what was going on in my head. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, so I have that jingle in my head. I don't think anything about it. I, it was just a, a, a totally random, boring day at work. I get off work, and I've got a 2000 Nokia dumb phone, you know, the kind of had the old right. pull out, and it buzzes in my pocket, and I pull it out, and I get a text message, and it read, it's a slinky. Mm. So someone that had technology that knew that was going on, and... It just it blew my mind, and still at this point, I didn't know as a target individual. I knew some crazy stuff was going on, and but I didn't know what to search for. I was uh, searching for like uh, propaganda, uh, psychological warfare, but I never could, you know, get the bread trail to the gang stalking and the targeting thing until a couple of years later. And then once I, you know, I found out about it, I'm like, this is it. Eureka, this is what's going on with me. And a lot of people will have this argument that goes something to this effect that these targeted individuals are delusional because they all go online and they find the same information about their delusions. And so they all have this mass delusion together. Well, I didn't have a mass delusion from 2004 until 2010. I had every one of these things play out in my life. And then when I start reading about it, then I find out that the East Super German Stasi police created this very same type of organized stalking and harassment to sabotage people. That's right. what, you know, Now, like, during this during this long crucible, this 17 year uh, period, has the stalking at any point, whether it was, uh, you know, a, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, has it ever let up? Have they ever yeah, gone on yeah. vacation or let up? I have went through periods where I, I, I didn't get it. And I even uh, put up a video a couple of years ago that, hey, my targeting is ended. 
and people were, you know, making compact, uh, 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 comments on my channel saying it never ends. If yours ended, you was never really a, a true targeted individual. And within a month or two of that, it resumed. And I just, I'm still undergoing a campaign right now. Uh, I'm sure after I'm through uh, filming this, that I'm going to go out into the public and people are going to let me know you shouldn't have done that. I went through a campaign that lasted from somewhere in August to about uh, late October, early November, December, and they pulled out all the stops, man. And this time I really saw how much money was involved in this because there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in on this. I even talked to some of them and uh, these people are like mindless zombies. They sign up for a role player surveillance uh, position. They get a car, they get uh, uh, you know, debit card, motel room, and they're just told to uh, you know, uh, post up all throughout my routes and harass me uh, vehicularly, honk their horns at me, flip me off, things like that. And a lot of it involved this one headlight thing. And I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's just a way of letting you know that you're being targeted. And for me, one headlight things that doesn't really, it's not that significant because I have at times had one headlight out of my car and I, it, it happens to people. But when you're going through a campaign of this, I drive every day for 10 to 12 hours a day and I may see 10 one headlight cars, but when I'm going, undergoing a campaign, I'll see hundreds of them all day long. Not only one headlight, but they'll turn the headlights off. It'll be one headlight and then turn it off. Both headlights, turn it off, and then this headlight on. They'll flick with their lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be driving down the road. My phone's hacked, my GPS is hacked, and it's nighttime and I'll go over a hill. And as soon as I go over a hill on a lonely street, on the other side, a car will be waiting. Poof turn their headlights on. I'll pass that one, they'll turn them off. They won't pull into traffic. I'll go down another couple of blocks, take a right. Another car will be waiting in the dark on a lonely street. Poof, turn the headlights on. And it's like that all night long until I finish my deliveries. So I see. it's a way of, of, let, of letting you know we have eyes on you and we're everywhere. Now, now this uh, period of time when it stopped, I'm just trying to think, and maybe you can rack your brain too. If there was anything that that correlated with that, meaning did you change jobs or did you move or any change that you may have made or something that may have, or the weather, I don't know, just anything that may have, because it gets hot there in, 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 uh, in Tyler, Texas. I mean, just something that could have correlated with that cessation in this campaign that you speak of. Now, after 17 years of this and many years of, of of now being aware of who's doing it, why they're doing it. Uh, it nothing has rhyme or reason. This last campaign that I endured, um, this was pre-planned. It, it, I, I could tell by everything that went, was going on that it was planned months in advance and they were gonna have this, uh, uh, this group of people that they probably paid for their motels, got them rental cars, debit cards, fed them, clothed them, gave them uh, props like gym bags. And th there's a lot of mimicry in this. Uh, right. I, I normally carry a gym bag or I used to to my car. that has got my weapon in it. It's got my snacks in it because I drive all day and I'll be driving up and down the street and I'll see a guy with a gym bag exactly like mine wearing a cap that I normally wear the same type of clothing attire. And it's about mimicry. I went down a road during this campaign and, uh, I had to go back and forth several times and there was this chair right by the woods. And one time when I would drive by the chair would be this way. I'd come back 30 minutes later, it'd be this way. I'd come mm -hmm. back 30 minutes later, it'd be facing this way. So it was just a psychological game because they know when you become uh, 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 the center of their attention, when it's a really uh, uh, bad campaign, they know that you're totally uh, in vigilante mode, not vigilante, but in a mode of vigilance, I would say. Yeah, towards. vigilance, right. And, 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 and have they ever gotten violent with you? Have these people ever attacked you or beaten you or, or no, vandalized no. things or anything like that? No, no. Okay. Uh, everyone, I, I, my life has been threatened indirectly through veiled threats and innuendos. 
Uh, I've heard many, many times the same Walmart guy, people will walk up to me that I don't even know. They won't talk to me. That's why it's called directed conversation. It's a conversation that is intended for the target to hear, but it's not spoken to the target. I two, or people, two or more people can get together and say something like, they're going to kill him. Right. They're no, I, I, I asked about that cessation in, um, in uh, if there was any correlation to it, only because uh, long ago, I listened to an interview uh, of a podcaster with um, somebody who said they were a gang stalking victim. He was an Indian guy. And the guy was not coherent like like the way you're speaking now. He, yeah. he sounded wild, okay? Yeah. And, and that guy asked him, and I think it was an appropriate question to ask him, have you ever used any uh, drugs? First of all, like illicit drugs, because the guy was really loopy sounding like. And um, yeah. he said, no. And he, and he said, have you ever been prescribed any psychiatric drugs, prescription psychiatric drugs? And um, the guy said, yeah, yeah, I took, uh, it was some antipsychotic drug and an SSRI I took for uh, three months. And then the host asked the guy, he said, and, and during those three months, did they keep stalking you? And the guy said, without skipping a beat, said, no, they went on vacation during those three months and <laughs> stalk me. And it was like, well, you know, and actually that revealed to the guy, well, think, think about this, right? Because if you were suffering from psychosis, like, I mean, it, psychosis can take many things. I, I had a, I was walking down the street the other day and a guy was having obviously a psychotic episode and he was preaching to a whole church. And I mean, they were there to him. They were perfectly real to him on the corner, but obviously there was no church there, only a, a few cars. Um, so it can take many forms, but, but like clearly in this guy's case, he had, he had absorbed the phenomenology of gang stalking yeah. and had, had, had overlaid it on top of his, his own psychiatric, um, illness, an unfortunate psychiatric illness. And it had taken the shape and, and actually I think it worked out for him and he, he yeah. got back on that medication and was never uh, terrorized by that, by that again. But, uh, that, that's why I ask cause it's just, it's, in, it's interesting to see what what might correlate with the start of something like this and, and, and the ending or the beginning or anything else, you know, it's, it's, and I'm sure you, so what do you see? I mean, what percentage of the people that, that comment to you or email to you, what percentage of them would you say just sound to you to be off base where they they don't, they don't sound like they're maybe all there. What, what would you say? Cause a lot of people comment to you many, many times. Um, we, we have several things that factor into making a target look crazy. Number one, I, I, I'm a member of about 40 to 50 uh, Facebook groups on targeting Voice to Skull, Gang Stalking, and all, all the other. There are a few articulate people who can get their point across because, you know, they did well in school. They can write. They know what punctuation is. They don't right. shout all caps. But you have, uh, and I consider them legit. But you have other people that are possibly legitimate, but they're partially illiterate as well, and they can't articulate their point very good. And half the time they post something, I'm like, what's the meaning of this? Like, case in point, uh, a target the other day, and, and there's other people to reinforce this, is they're, they're making me hold my urine. They're making me hold my poop. I mean, yeah. that, there, you take a laxative. Get an animal. Nobody's doing yeah. that. Right, right. And you've got that. And then you've got other people who, um, you know, are maybe English is their second language and they, they don't know how to fully communicate in English and they type in whatever it is they want to say. And it just, it, it, it comes off. Odd. It doesn't come off. Wise, I don't know, but there, there's another factor to this, that this is, this is a, a federally ran program, kind of like COINTELPRO. A continuation of MK Ultra, and they do have a lot of people who post up in these groups who are getting paid uh, to discredit targeted individuals by opposing by posing as they're insane to discredit, you know, this mm -hmm. this targeted individual program. But right. there are yeah, there there are a lot of people that are really off. Right, sure, and and of course we talk we talk about these people, not with any, you know, malice or anything, anything like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's no fault of their own. If, if they do suffer from some kind of malady or illness or something, it's just, uh, but I, I'm just uh, curious what, what you thought of that. And, and because you, you have a unique view, like I said, cause you, you, 
you've seen it all and you've you've been around it for a long time. Um, interesting, interesting. And so I guess then looking to the future, you must have thought a lot about, you know, ways to make this stop. I mean, I, I can't even imagine you must have thought a lot about that. Um, what are some ideas? What I mean, maybe don't show all your cards, but what are you what are you thinking? I mean, have people had success leaving the country? Have they had success uh, uh, moving away to some, you know, secretly moving away? I mean, I'd be thinking about all those things if it were me, what, what yeah. I could do. I've tried moving uh, that that one job that I was talking about with a lady who was going over on Roadback Mountain. I, I put in I, I think I quit the day after that. I just couldn't handle it. Uh, I thought, wow, this is I don't know what's going on. I can't handle this. And I took six weeks off to regroup. And then I went to work at a nursing home in, down the road in Chandler, Texas. And the first two weeks was a honeymoon. And then after that, uh, I get the same harassment. I'm sitting. Oh, wait, I, I want to pull a prop for you. I'm sitting sure. down, closing out my notes for the night, documenting on all my patients so I can go home. I've already given a report to the nurse that's going to take over my patients. And so as I'm sitting at the desk charting, she takes like a ball cap, but it has mm -hmm. embroidered with the inscription, I got my eye on you. And she plops mm. down in front of me, and then I just, I knock it out of the way. She walks back around a minute later, and she takes the cap, and she sets it right in front of my chart. I could have went off on her, but, but I had this feeling that this whole time, part of what's going on is some type of psychological propaganda to make me uh, snap and blow my fuse. And I said, I can't do that. So I grabbed all my charts. I put them in a mobile chart rack. And I hauled them off to a different location. I finished my charting and I can't, you know, uh, I went right. home. But I got a two week uh, honeymoon. That job didn't last week, six weeks. And in the middle of the night, I packed up all my belongings and I went to Austin, Texas because I lived there, lived in Austin in the 80s. And I knew the area. Once again, two week honeymoon. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm getting tracked, surveilled, followed. And at one particular place where I worked at as a nurse, because I was called to that one unit so many times, they figured out that I'm going to be there a lot. So that's where they set up their base of operations to attack me. And they would send people in. Walmart's going to kill him. Uh, I was actually uh, uh, doing treatments and giving medicine at this one unit. And there were every day work was centered around with these people who were at the beginning professional and very cordial. And I would mm. ask them to do something and chop, chop, they would go do it. And then all of a sudden I know, notice I walk into work and people start looking at me like, oh, that's him. And then I'd ask them to do something and they'd act like they didn't hear me. Then I'd have to ask them again. Then they would just drag their tail. And uh, this group of young men on this particular unit started talking about how they kill people, you know, because they really let it out that, and I don't know if this is true or not, but they, they let it be known that when they're not working here at Austin State School, they're, they're employed as gangbangers and, you know, they do hits on people. And so they started talking about this while I'm in the middle of the day room doing G, G food, G tube uh, feedings, you know, you got to feed right. people through their stomach. And they're, that, they're just sitting right around where I'm at. And they're, it's, the macabre is death. It's dying, it's killing, and they're sitting there snickering. And this is not a, a conversation that uh, lower level employees should be having around their supervisor because I was their supervisor. Right. And, and as I'm doing this, one of their buddies comes to uh, the unit to visit him to visit these guys, but he cannot come in. It's against the law, you know, he, he doesn't work there. And he's this real tall guy, and he's over there talking. They're looking back and forth and pointing at me and stuff. And this guy looks at me. And I, I think this guy was a paid actor, but he looks at me and he does the universal sign. Right, right. Wrote, and it was all I could do to make it through that day because this was 2007. I still didn't know I was in the program. I packed up everything and I went home to my hometown. And then it happened again within two weeks, two weeks. Mm -hmm. 
they're, they're on you. They follow you wherever you, you cannot escape this. There is no escape plan. The only way for this to stop is for our government, for people in Congress to realize that this program is happening and to shut it down. But the reason it cannot be shut down is because it has something to do with national security, or at least it's, it's kept under that banner and nobody can, can inquire about it. I would venture to say that the program, the same people running this program, they're loosely connected with the whole, uh, you know, the whole election fraud that we had uh, recently with Trump. It is an, a worldwide organization of making sure that things are being done to cir circumvent the Constitution, to take away people's rights, and to basically drag this country down into the depths of hell. And with that said, targeted individuals used to be limited to people like me, but now they're using uh, this technology on CIA people, the people in, uh, you heard, heard of the Havana syndrome? I have, I, I've heard of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that is used on targeted individuals started is now using, is being used on them. And some of them are starting to complain of the same type of tactics that we've been undergoing. Right, as I understand it, there was something like, something like 1300 federal employees reported it. And there was like a bunch of them where they could like, you know, zero it down to other things, meaning yeah. the health, the health aspects of this. And yeah. they said, well, oh, oops, looks like you have a tumor or uh, no, looks like you have this or whatever it happened to be. But there were about 25 that they couldn't find any other uh, illness or, or anything else for. And those people now they're, they're investigating what kinds of, uh, uh, perhaps directed energy weapons or other things could have been uh, could have been used against them. Uh, uh, I hear it's the same technology, the same chirping. I hear the same exact frequency that has been played on, um, you know, uh, uh, CNN, MSNBC, when they mm -hmm. talking about Havana syndrome, the same exact frequency. I have experienced vertigo. I mean, if you there was one time I was in a hospital and I'm in my bed and I hear what sounds like water, a brook, you know, like a stream of water. And then uh, I get up to investigate it and I walk into a certain area in my room and I can hear all this stuff in my head. And it just right. sounds like a bunch of mumbling voices, like a group of people talking very, very softly. And then I get out of that, that line of what radio frequency, I don't hear it anymore. I get back in it, I hear it. I get out of it. I don't hear it. So this it, all crazy places to be in a hospital being attacked using some form of directed energy. Now, uh, now the uh, out of all the people you've seen, have you have you personally seen anybody who has uh, seen an end to this happening to them um, who said, yeah, they, they stopped. And like, you know, six months later, they've still stopped. No, um, but I have seen a couple of people that I wondered what happened to them. There's a gentleman on um, on YouTube, very articulate, and he could just have a killer channel that would just blow me in the dust. His name is James Harkin, and he posted a lot of uh, information about this program. And then, you know, haven't heard anything from him since. There was another guy in uh, Oklahoma, him and his wife were being targeted, and um, what he, on his videos, what he was stating was that he turned to, turned his life back to the Lord and uh, things cleared up for him. And I haven't seen anything else posted by him in about three years. Mm. So mm. that would be the extent of that. As far as other people, it doesn't end this. They have got a federal budget that they, they can just go to town on anybody they want to. They can keep pressure on anyone they want to. Uh, the, probably one of the reasons I don't get it 24 seven is because I'm not in Dallas. I'm not in Austin. I'm not in San Antonio. I'm not in Houston. Tyler is just this uh, small right. city in between Dallas and uh, Shreveport. And I don't think that there's a base of operations set up nearby. So when they had to bring the campaign to me, they had to come from Dallas or some other big city, put these people up in a motel and give them uh, these rental cars with paper tags, every every car that was involved in this, uh, every person involved in this last campaign had a rental car and fake paper tags. And mm. these were paid actors. How, how do you discern, because it must be a tough thing, how do you discern between 
oh no, that is just a car with one headlight versus this campaign, because it must be tough. You must have to be able to make those kind of discern yeah. discernments between, exactly. you know, that's just a coincidence and that's not. How do you how do you sort through that? Well, a coincidence is, uh, you know, I, I drive every day delivering groceries and I, I, I just know the lay of the land. I, I know what's normal for traffic. I know when it's too much traffic. I know when, wow, we don't have much traffic today. And you only see like maybe 10 or 15 one headlights throughout the day. And I just, I don't think anything about it, but there's other targeted individuals that they will go out and just film everything and every one headlight they see, that's one headlight. Yeah, it's that's for me. Or right. they a color like red or blue. And everyone one that is wearing red and blue to them is harassing them. And that's just right, not, right. The way the way I, I uh, discern from that is when I'm undergoing an intense campaign of harassment, when I see about a hundred a day, uh, certainly I can't tell which one is. The, the actual perpetrator versus, you know, some guy that sure. does headlight. Sure. But I try not to worry about it too much because out of all the times I've been harassed by the, this type of uh, harassment, nobody's ever got out of the car, threatened to whip me, uh, put hands on me or anything. So it's just- So like, I guess the, the the less you worry about it, probably the better. Oh, exactly. Because if you worry, worry about it too much, so you'd just be doing their bidding. Well, that, that's part of this program. It's to make a person implode mentally uh, for a person. And there's people like this. They spend their entire day posting on Facebook. I went outside the one headlight. I went outside the blue shirts. I went outside. People are saying something to me. And what I try to tell people on my channel, it's it's mostly about coping. Just ignore it. You know, if, if it's significant, document it, journal it time, person, date, who, what, when, where, right. and go about your life. Because if you're preoccupied, and, oh, they're following me in the store, so what? What are they going to do? I mean, right. if, if someone wants to put their hands on me, that's we're, we're going we're gonna to go down a different road real quick. But nobody's ever put their hands on me, and nobody ever will. I mean, there's been plenty of opportunity. They would have by now, you'd think. Yeah, the, there's yeah. been plenty of opportunity to lay hands on me, and it... it it just never happens. So many death threats never followed up on. Um, it's 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 just a mind game is what it is. Right, right. OK, well, I wish we had more time to, to keep going here, but I guess in closing, where can people check out your YouTube channel and uh, follow you and uh, support what you're doing? OK, I got a YouTube channel called That Gang Stalking Show on YouTube and it's uh, got a little unique name, That Gang Stalking Show. Back several years ago, there used to be a, a, a show on VH1 called That Metal Show. Mm, I see, uh, yeah. Yeah, I used to watch that a lot and I thought, hey, let's just do a, you know, do a spin on this. And right. I didn't think that I was gonna get any viewers, but the first video that I did called How a Targeting Individuals Profile took off and I think I got like, right now 118,000 viewers on it and it brought a lot of people into the channel and uh, you know I left the video up and if people were to go back and look at the video I'm being very sarcastic I'm being sardonic uh, right being smart now and uh, they may look at it and go you look like you're crazy in there and I'm like I was trying to figure an, an, uh, an angle for the show right. to, to have a character in it and then after I did that video, I said, wow, we're getting a lot of subs. I need to change the direction of the show. I don't need to be a character. I just need to be a person that's got great content and uh, setting the record straight, straight about awesome. Well, so, thanks thanks so much for joining us, Doug. It's It's been great to talk to you, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can have you on again sometime soon. Very good, sir. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Mm -hmm. right, let's see here.